Hey, is there somebody in here? In the years that I've done this ministry, I've seen everything. You see eyes rolling in the back of the head, foaming at the mouth, growling. He yeah. thinks he was possessed by a killer, and he, uh, he got into that scene, and it was difficult for him to get out, and nobody could explain it. We've taken people up here that have never been in here, don't know anything about it, men and women, and they've got him possessed. It's like somebody has taken over another person. A lot of these things we don't talk about. Hi, I'm Julia Miller, and we're in front of the 1925 Reynolds Jail. This jail was really, really overcrowded. It is set up for 25. They had 84 inmates. It was state-of-the-art with the gallows and everything. I can't imagine 20 men being in here. This place is weird. You'll hear them walking up the stairs. Yeah, they're gonna get you. The f***ing door to the jail is open. Are you f***ing rolling? Whoa, whoa, which one is that? That's right above me. Oh. I like the lights. I like the lights! Oh. 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 Hey! Is there somebody in here? On tonight's episode of The Paranormal Files, we're in the small town of Ballinger, Texas. And right behind me is the building we'll be investigating, a notorious local jail with a dark and disturbing past. This jail is truly haunted, unlike any other place we've ever visited. In fact, it's known for one specific thing, possessing people. That's right, multiple visitors to this abandoned jail have been possessed by the angry spirits that lie within. So join us tonight on The Paranormal Files as we dive deep into the darkness of this notorious, abandoned, and haunted building. And let me tell you, this door, once you watch this episode, what you are seeing right behind me is gonna scare the shit out of you. We just witnessed this entire thing go down. Just, you have to keep watching to see this. Anyways, I'm Colin Browen, and welcome to The Paranormal Files. All right, everybody, tonight, we are visiting one of the most haunted places in all of Texas. And where would that be? The Possession Jail. Oh, God. Now, we have done a lot of jails in the past. We've done some really spooky ones in Texas, but this place might honestly take the cake, man. The actual judge of the county and the guy who runs the ghost tours here told me that this place possesses people. Frequently, investigators that are in this building are taken over by whatever the spirits are inside of this jail, and due to some dark history, uh, oh my god, you can see why. There it is. Why does it always gotta be possessions, man? <laughs> I don't know, man, but look at that thing. Oh my god. We're actually the first investigators to get access to this place in the last three months, so. So they're just patiently waiting for us? They are patiently waiting. I'm uh. That's so jacked up. Why can't we just like go investigate like a playground or something? Or like, <laughs> you know what? I think Destin, Florida's haunted. And we yeah. need to go to. <laughs> we need to go investigate the beach out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go investigate the mountains of Hawaii. Oh yeah. 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 Go investigate a, bit, a steakhouse. <laughs> yeah. Or just go investigate like. A nice hot tub. There you go. I'm down for a hot tub <laughs> investigation. <laughs> well, guys, we are going to head in there and uh, wish us luck. Wish us luck. I have a feeling this one's going to get dark because the history here is, uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. The county jail 
in Ballinger, Texas, is a place that is known to possess people, to take people over, and all we know about this place is how eerie it is. I mean, just walking around in it, you have a feeling that just people are watching you everywhere you go in this place. I'm pretty scared of it. There's something about jails that just kind of creep me out. I mean, as we know, most of the people that were put in that place weren't necessarily doing good things in life. So it makes you kind of wonder, are they able to do stuff more in the afterlife than they were in their human bodies? I mean, we don't know who was in this jail. Murderers, kidnappers, I mean, the list can go on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's just really a mystery. In tonight's video, we are investigating a notorious jail here in Ballinger, Texas, where we're recording this interview. I've done a number of jails in the past, and jails are always very, very spooky. I mean, they're the little brother of prisons, but, but you have the same type of history in a jail, the same type of violence. You have murderers, you have people who take their own lives, you have murderers, rapists, people that are held there. And as you're about to hear about in this history, this jail was incredibly overcrowded to the point where they almost considered shutting it down because it was violating the law. I mean, that's that's massive amounts of overcrowding. We're talking about fitting 30 full grown men into cells that were made for essentially 12 people and the Texas heat in the middle of the summer. If you can imagine how terrible that is. But neither Connor or I knew that what we were about to experience would be so raw, so real, so terrifying, and just honestly so, it all happened so fast. I don't think we've ever had an investigation that ramped up to the level this got to so quickly. Something was definitely there, and we learned after the fact that we were the first people to investigate the building and even be inside of the building in three months. So the spirits had been waiting. And they call this place the Possession Jail for a reason, because multiple people have been taken over while inside the building, to the point where their eyes have changed, their voices have changed, they had to be taken out of the building afterwards, after they were taken over, they passed out for 25 minutes, so obviously that's something scary to hear, and it made us a little bit on edge, even while doing the history, but yeah, we first actually got our tour that night from the judge of the county that we're in right now. She came out and met us, and yeah, this is just gonna get crazy really, really fast. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. Oh, we're going. Okay, hi, I'm Julia Miller. I'm the Reynolds County Judge. We're here in Ballinger, Texas, and we're in front of the 1925 Reynolds County Jail. And what we're trying to do, we established a nonprofit several years ago to raise money to restore it. And what we'd like to do is get it back to a point where there is a, um, a museum, a visitor center, that type of thing, because we really want to have a place to house the history of this jail and the earlier jail and just to have information for generations that come after us. So, if y'all want to come on in, this is the... Thank you. This is where the holding area was when inmates, uh, defendants, arrestees, whatever you want to call them, they would come in. These doors were shut so that you couldn't... Ah, they're very heavy. Um, so this area is when where they would be booked in, and then the stairs are right behind you, and it, we've got two floors of cells up there. The rest of the floor down at the bottom is where, back in the day when this was built, there was a jailer, his wife, and their family. And they all lived here. And uh, there was an individual, his name was Sheriff McWilliams, and he was the seventh Reynolds County Sheriff. And his son, who was in his 90s, came maybe, what, a couple of years ago? And um, 
What he wanted to bring his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. So he came and he brought so much knowledge with him. He was six years old in 1925 when they lived here at the jail. So he had, I believe, 10 brothers and sisters and his mom and dad. So apparently there were 12 people that lived in this area. He, and we'll go through here, and I'm just gonna give you a lot of the information that he gave us. This little room, um, this is where he said he kept, uh, where his dad kept his guns, all of his ammunition, everything, you know, he told a whole story about how he held off a lynch mob out here on the steps, and it was just really, really interesting. When he showed up, as soon as he stepped out of the car, he's in his, I think he was 96, and he just started telling these amazing stories. So I grabbed my recorder and just turned it on so that we could have all of that. He has since passed away, so I'm really, really glad he came. Um, so this is where the guns were. In later years, it was a radio room, dispatch, um, and that's what this little area was. In here was basically a bedroom. Uh, this was one of their living areas, and when I was speaking with Mr. McWilliams, I said, well, which ones were bedrooms? He said, well, heck, they were all bedrooms. There were 12 of us, so every place was a bedroom. And um, so, as you can see, it really needs a lot of work. Our, we've got desks shoved up against here trying to hold the door up, and that's why we're raising money. That's why we do these tours. These two wheelchairs um, in one of the basements uh, that we've been cleaning out, these were some old wheelchairs that we brought up out of there and we wanted to preserve them. Not sure what we're gonna do with them, but we're trying to hang on to a lot of Reynolds County history. Would, this, this, would these have been wheelchairs for people in jail? I don't know. We don't know. I don't uh, know what the story is. I, yeah, I don't know what this, I have no idea. There are these tags that we found on them. They're about to fall apart. And they may oh, have wow. been donated uh, because this is the property of the American Legion. So I don't really know what they were used for, <laughs> but they're they're pretty old and they're pretty creepy. But, <laughs> they do look a little creepy. You know? <laughs> so, um, this was another bedroom, living area, and again, we're really trying to clean up and they, we've just got so much work to do, but it's a huge project. And moving on into here, again, was bedrooms, living areas, and um, I'm guessing, I don't know where the showers, all of, I don't know bathrooms, I have no idea where any of that was, but uh, it's been changed so much over the years. This, um, was the kitchen area, and in later years, this was the laundry where they did um, the inmates' laundry. And when the sheriff and his wife families lived here, whoever that might be, the, um, the sheriff was also the jailer, and the wife was also the cook. So whatever she cooked for the inmates, that's what her family ate. And um, Sheriff McWilliams had told us that uh, he brought some information with him, and he brought a copy of the 1930 census. And listed on the census is his dad, Sheriff McWilliams, and his wife, all of his siblings. They were all listed on the census. And then you get further down there, and it's got a few inmates. And then down at the very bottom, it had Bonnie Parker. And Bonnie Parker, uh, they were from Rowena, Texas, which is just about eight miles from here. We don't have any records, jail records, that back that up, but um, it's on the census. So that leads us to believe she was in this jail at some point. Wow. So that's 
This was the kitchen area. I don't really know what it looked like at any given time. It's, this is just kind of all that's left of it right now. So we've made a big circle and we'll go in these stairs, be really careful and watch your head when you go up because it's really low right there. This uh, is one of our trustee cells. And um, at some point there, a shower was put back here and I think there is a, I think there was a toilet. They took a lot of these out. We closed this jail down in 19, it was in 99 when we opened up our new jail out on the edge of town. This jail was really, really overcrowded. I think it is set up for 25 inmates, maybe 35, I can't remember. They had 84 inmates in this jail whenever they moved everybody out to the new jail. So it was incredibly overcrowded back in the 90s. That's crazy. It's yeah. really crazy. More than triple the capacity? Yeah. Some heavy doors. A, they're all, <laughs> and they don't work real well. Um, this particular, uh, this is called the bullpen, or what they've always called the bullpen. And um, it is, our tape is falling down. There are 12 bunks, one shower, one toilet. So basically for 12 people. And in the 90s, there were as many as 30 men housed inside this cell. I, and I had asked where did they sleep and what they did, they just put pallets, just bedding on the floor, and that's where these guys slept. So wow. what's your step as you come in? So this was just the bullpen, and as you can see, and I don't know if you can get this on the camera, how tiny these, to put four Come adult on. men inside this is just Oh my God, yeah. Incredible. I, they were very, very, crowded. very, very crowded. I couldn't imagine sleeping in there with three other you dudes. The tension that would be in here? Yeah, right? And especially yeah. if it's a violent offender or yes. somebody like that. Like, no thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, really, really close quarters. That's the way it was back in the day. And um, this is one cell. There's one cell behind you with four bunks. Same thing, very small, very close quarters. And then uh, there's four more bunks over there. Uh, that was an old shower over here. And then I guess during the day, they kind of had a little more room to move around. And our former jail administrator had told us a story. There was some, at some point, there was someone that escaped. They got out these windows and they jumped off the balcony out on the front, but he broke his leg jumping down. So he didn't get very far. They did, <laughs> they did catch him. Oh, that's him. unfortunate. Just so, yeah. 30 people. There, I know. know. That's just four of us. I'm like, this is plenty of people in here. Yeah. <laughs> there are four of us, and they put 26 more people in here. Mm. It would get really, really crowded. So, um, and this cell, the bullpen, there's a corridor that goes all the way around. And what I had been told, uh, Mr. McWilliams said that the reason that that was built that way. So for exercise, and it was just this walk around that goes, it goes all the way around this way, and you can walk completely. That's interesting because we hear footsteps a lot of times. Really? I didn't even know that. And that, that may be where it comes from. Um, I can see jogging, jogging little circles around this. Just around and around and around. Like a rabbit in a, or a gerbil in a wheel. And then this was all of the, mecha the mechanics to open and close the doors. Nothing cool. was electronic. It's, we, and what we'd like to do is get it to a point where they're all functioning. Right now, they're not. Um, and when we first started coming over here, that's all of these. We've got them chained so that they can't shut. 
because we've had them shut and then we can't get them open. So we don't want to really lock anybody in. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is, uh, this is the drunk tank. That is why these beds are so close to the ground. Uh, it's that way in this one and then we've got two cells in here and that's where individuals could come in, the drunk, let them sleep it off and they wouldn't fall off of their bunks. That's interesting. <laughs> I've never seen that. Like a super low cot. Super but low the toilet's cot. high. Yeah. <laughs> the, the toilet's high. Yeah, the toilet's yeah. low. <laughs> well, that, that may be where you can sit on the bed and throw up. Yeah, yeah right. Not a bad idea. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> and then we'll go on up to the third floor. And again, watch your head and then these stairs are very steep. This was, this is similar to the um, trustee cells downstairs. This was just the female area back during that time there really weren't that many females we've got a lot more these days but um that the thing i laugh about in that cell those bars are thicker than any of the bars around the whole jail <laughs> well, yeah and they've got them going that way yeah there's extra i don't know maybe they figured they could figure clever. out that it's a little more clever. <laughs> Some scary women in here. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also, there would be a jailer station, and what a jailer station consisted of, it was just a chair. So that was a jailer <laughs> station. Interesting. <laughs> just a chair. And in here, this, I believe this was the juvenile, and watch your head up here, it's very low. And these were the juvenile cells that they would put. You see what I mean? They're tucked away. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And again, these were pretty low to the ground, but they had two bunks in there. So that's, that's all I know about this. We'll go back in here. This room, um, in the 90s, they used this as a library. Um, but what Mr. McWilliams had told us is that somewhere in here there was a padded cell he said because there were mentally ill inmates you know back then and i think this is what he was talking about he couldn't remember and the reason that i think this is what it is if you'll see all mm -hmm. of this it's that's the only thing i can think of is that's what they could hang that padding on and also the window is closed up. So, I mean, there was no light in here. There was wow. nothing. So, kind of. A little eerie. Yeah. And uh, then there were some other cells, additional cells here. In the 90s, this, uh, there were so many individuals um, that as many as 15 to 18 men would be housed just in this little area. And again, obviously there's just one, two, three, four bunks, and they would just put bedding on the floor, and that's where everybody slept in this area. I yeah, just, snuggle up with your buddies in here. Yeah, you're getting real close. Yeah. <laughs> this was, um, this was a male cell, and it had eight bunks, and as many as 20 men would be housed in this small area. And again, what's your foot there? I can't imagine 20 men being in here. No. Um, I mean, it's very, there are only two bunks here, and then a couple of, I think maybe four over there. So it's very, very small to house as many people as they put in here. And with the jail standard, uh, with the uh, commission, with the jail commission and the Texas jail standards, they, this jail was really on the brink of being shut down because of just the overcrowding. But that kind of wraps up, I mean, still, it just amazes me that oh, yeah. it's just such a, Area. It's crazy to think that 
there were some people here that were sent to my grandpa's jail. Yes. Yeah. My I'm grandpa sure. was the warden at Huntsville. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was also used as a transfer station, I think. So, like, when they went between. Oh, probably. They probably dropped them off. Dropped them off, and then the somebody would come and pick yeah. them up. There's also, well, you know, we do these tours on, um, we have what's called the Ethnic Festival, and it's the last weekend of April. So, um, you know, we open the jail up and we do these tours and have people come in. And it's interesting, the, the people that do come in, because some of them's like, oh, I've never been in here before. And then other ones come in and go, yeah, I've been here. I, my father was here. My granddad was here. And then other ones come in and they go, I was here. Yeah. And I hadn't <laughs> been here, you know, in 30 years or 20, you know, when it, well, more than 20 years, but you know, like 30, 40 years ago. So they come in, they go, well, I just kind of want to see it, you know, from a different perspective. And one guy came in this last April, and he said something about, and I don't know if I've told you this, he said there is this little thing, and I'll show you, we'll go back downstairs, he said in each of the cells, he said the little thing where you could light a cigarette. And I, I, I said, what are you talking about? And he said the little thing on the wall that you could light a cigarette. And I said, I have no clue what you're talking about. So let's go down and I'll show you what he was <laughs> talking about. And I've seen them, but I had no idea that that's what it was. He said, yeah, you push a button and you can light your cigarette. So I guess it's comparable to the old cigarette lighters uh -huh. in vehicles. But um, that's what this is. It's an old cigarette lighter? Oh, That's wow. what it is. So you That's would push this crazy. button and it would light a cigarette. I mean, you could put your cigarette there and it would light. Isn't that wild? I, I've never even heard of such a I thing. I didn't either. I thought, I didn't know what this was. You know, I thought it was some kind of a speaker yeah, system. That's what like, it looks a, like And I just assumed, you know, you press it and talk into it. And he goes, no, no, no. It, so when he was telling me downstairs, I said, you got to show me what you're talking about. And we came up and he said, one of these. He said, you would just press it and you could put that's, your cigarette up there. And that's great. Wow. <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, really, that's interesting history, right? really interesting. So, um, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Were there ever any deaths here in the jail? Oh, I'm sure there were. I'm not, I don't know of anything. We covered, we uncovered a bunch of stuff from newspaper. Or, or oh, did you? Just show you? They lit fires in here. Well, yeah, well, that was one of the things that they had trouble with, like with the old, old jail, uh, because so much of it was built with wood. And they always had inmates starting fires. And the other thing to heat them was just wood burning or coal burning stoves. So apparently they had a lot of jail fires and would burn down the jail and people would get out and um, in the old jail not this one but um, and I can't remember what year it was they had a, a jail escape and what they had done they had tied all of the sheets together in the picture that they put in the paper and someone sent me that article and I've got it over the courthouse, but they took a picture from the other side, and you can see the sheets from the top tied together where they <laughs> where they all escaped. Wow. And I'm like, ah, oh, that is just crazy. like the cartoons. Yeah, yeah, that's super I, cool. <laughs> there was also a story because the wreck yard was down here mm -hmm. and at the fence. There was a story of a guy that went over the fence, escaping, oh. and he cut himself, oh. and they tracked his blood. There you go. Until they found it. It's like so, several blocks that way. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they got yeah. real far, but um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the other stories that, well, one of the stories that Mr. McWilliams told us um, about his mom and dad, his dad apparently was very strict, very stern. He was pretty hardcore sheriff, jailer, that kind of thing. Well, his wife, Mrs. McWilliams, was more of the easygoing, and um, 
he, uh, Mr. McWilliams said that there was an inmate here, and I don't know what he was in here for, whether it was theft or whatever, but he was a musician, and he had a gig coming up that Saturday night. And so Mrs. McWilliams, you know, when she would bring food to them, you know, their meals to them, she would get to know them and kind of just visit with them. And this inmate told her, said, I've got this gig, I really need to go. And um, he said, do you think Sheriff McWilliams would let me go to this gig that we've got going? And she goes, no, he's not gonna let you, he's not gonna <laughs> let you go. And, um, but she said, as it got closer and it got closer, he kept asking and he said, you know, he goes, if you will just let me, he goes, I promise, I promise I will come back. I just need to, he said, I can't let them down. So she said, okay, as long as you don't tell Sheriff McWilliams. So she let him out. He went to the gig and I asked Mr. I said, did he come back? And he goes, he sure did. He promised her he would come back. So, wow. <laughs> and so it was really, like I said, I was really glad I got to visit with him and hear some of his stories and that, that kind of thing. What else? You said you've got stories. Lots, lots of things. I'm going to relate a lot of things. Uh, the biggest thing that gets us in here, actually the creepiest thing, I think I told you this, is right out here, we were one night all standing in the bullpen, and this door was closed. The bottom door was closed. Nobody was upstairs. We are all in there and we're just talking and I was standing at a viewpoint where I was looking back this way towards this window and two other guys were standing next to me and all of a sudden about 20 minutes in their little deal I look over and the guys happened to be looking over here too and all of a sudden all three of us saw a man standing right here with blue jeans on and he looked kind of modern he didn't look like in old clothes and he was like right here. And then he just kind of goes off into the darkness and we're, we all freak out. Well, the scary thing about all that is we didn't hear him go up these stairs. We didn't hear him go down these stairs. Because you make he noise on these stairs, yeah. you can't escape. We checked everywhere. He wasn't here. Wow, that's pretty Right cool. here. It really made our hair like stand up. Yeah, right here. He was looking at us. He was watching us. Now, the first yeah. time that I brought you guys over and we came in here, mm -hmm. um, we had come and actually right here, you could smell cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. And, but it was just right here, concentrated. And if you got, if you stepped over here, you couldn't smell it. If you stepped over there, you couldn't smell it. But you'd step right back here and you could smell it. And I thought, well, there's got to be somebody smoking outside of the building and it's just, you know, somehow coming in. And there wasn't anybody, there hadn't been anybody. And, uh, but that's the only kind of yeah. creepy thing. The other thing is sometimes we smell what sounds, what smells like something being burned in here. Oh. Except we can't find it and there's some it's, smoke. It's the little cigarette thing. Exactly. <laughs> well, it could be that, or it could be like what I was telling you earlier about how they lit fires. Mm -hmm. There are also some things in newspapers about them rioting, which kind of makes sense, because if it's overcrowded, yeah, they probably did riot. Oh, I'm they sure they did. They probably got mad at different points, so. You ever read anything about s or anything like that? There were, there were some hangings in here. We did find some. We don't have a lot of photographs of, of the exterior of the jail, of the interior of the jail. So it's been really hard with what we're trying to figure out how to remodel it, how to, you know, take care of it or get it back to the original because we have no idea what, what, the, like. what the original was. So um, we're still on the lookout for photographs and that kind of thing, but, um, you know, we're just doing doing the best we can mm -hmm. and we just don't want to lose the building. We don't want it to get into such a state of disrepair that you've got to tear it down. Were there any famous like murderers that were in here? Any big cases I that were interesting? I haven't necessarily uncovered them yet, but the other stories that popped up like just within the last year that we found were surprising because we, we never even realized. With 
just going through old newspapers, oh, news, just different yeah, events. Right. And a lot of them took place in the 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot, a lot of things in the 40s. Time, and I, I see how easy it is to lose that history, you know, since I've been over at the courthouse for 13 years and, um, you know, we change things and we do things different and we don't think to document them, you know, I mean, it's just, we're just changing it. We're just doing something different and it's not that significant to us. But what I'm realizing is looking back in history, it's, you know, those changes are significant. What, you know, mm -hmm. what we've done and what uh, we've the changed. The biggest thing that and, I like to find is why was Bonnie Parker here? I know. That's, and, that's intriguing to me. Yeah, but what's interesting is there, apparently there were no charges filed or anything because we don't have anything. Um, Nothing substantiated mm -hmm. or, or stay. And the old jail, it did have uh, gallows in it. The president of our historical commission came across an article when she was searching for some other information. And uh, the... Um, article was on the old jail. This was in 1919. The old jail had burned. They remodeled it, restored it, added on to it, and it was state-of-the-art with the gallows. And it was a period in time, from what I understand, that the counties, if there was a hanging sentence, uh, the counties were the ones to carry that out, as opposed to the state or federal. So um, it was state of the art with the gallows and everything, and let her rip, basically. I guess. I guess. Strange <laughs> thing to brag about. You know, we got really nice gallows in our jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, there's a portion of that building still left. The gallows and the second floor were removed in the early '50s, I believe and this limestone that was part of that, um, that made up the gallows, made up the, that, was what they used to build our current sheriff's office right now. So the stone was just repurposed for another building. But uh, there, we had a woman um, call, like I was saying earlier, she, uh, she wanted to come tour this jail because her mother was born in the jail. Um, her grandfather and grandmother, he, uh, his name was Adolph Wilkie, and he was the um, jailer, maintenance person, groundskeeper, and they lived in the old jail. And she thought, she said, well, I wanted to tour the jail. I said, well, when was your grandmother born? And she goes, 1911. I said, that's not this jail. This jail was built in 25. I said it was the old jail, and so she brought photographs, and there's a photograph of her grandmother and grandfather. Her mother uh, is a baby on her lap, and then her mother's brothers and sisters, and her um, uncle, was, he looked to be about 10 at the time, his bedroom was over the gallows floor, and that's where he slept so I mean it was wow. a very tiny area but uh, the base of the gallows is still wow. there you can see the footprint of that so it, it's really interesting you know as we've been restoring this a lot of these stories you know have come up and um, Adolph Wilkie her grandfather and I had heard this story many many years ago it was in 1906, and I've got a newspaper clipping from that. Um, Adolph Wilkie had gone over to the courthouse, just right across the courthouse lawn, directly across from where we are right now. He had gone up to clean offices and straighten up and that kind of thing since he was the maintenance person. And there was a woman that had committed there, and he found her and uh, she had taken strychnine and our current district clerk has the little bottle that has those strychnine tablets that they found with her and wow. she's got those locked up over in a in a safe over there that's kind of how as i was saying that's how we met um, i had come to work uh, several years ago and one of our maintenance guys, they, one of them comes in early and they, again, they go up 
to the third floor, second floor, cleaning and that kind of thing. And he had gone to a men's restroom up on the third floor. Well, while he was in the restroom, he heard um, a woman's voice say, Bob, are you okay? And he thought, well, I guess Cindy, our auditor, he said, I, Cindy must be here. So he came out of the restroom. There was nobody in the hall. All of the doors were locked up. And so he went out and looked down in the parking lot. There was no one in the parking lot. There was no one in the building. And he came downstairs and he sat outside until somebody else showed up. He said, I'm not going back in there until somebody else goes in there with me. And when I walked up, they were all standing outside talking and he was just as white as a sheet. I mean, you could tell he was really shaken up. And he said, I, he said, I've been in that building, I don't know how many times, but he said it was just as clear of a voice as me standing here talking to you. Wow. And I, and that's what I was mm -hmm. saying, okay, we need to get ghost hunters, we need to get a paranormal investigation. And I went to our county judge at that time, and he goes, nah, I'm not gonna do that. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. And I was going, come on, Barry, let me do it. And I said, I'll come over here with him, nobody else has to. So um, that's, that's when, I, when I went over and met with them and we talked about the courthouse and then he said, well, what about the jail? So that's kind of how. Then our, one of our uh, assistant auditors, she works over the sheriff's office now, but she had gone up one morning. She thought she was the first one in the auditor's department and she started to put her key in the door and she heard a calculator going. So she thought the other assistant auditor was there early. And um, so she goes in and she opens the door and Sylvia, the other assistant auditor, was not there. She goes in and her calculator at her desk was calculating by itself. And the tape on the roll was, it just was mounds of it on the floor. So it had been going for a while. And uh, so she got her camera and she started video, you know, videoing it. And uh, so she was going around, well, she got to looking at the, the tape that was on the floor and it wasn't numbers, there were letters. And calculators don't do letters. They don't have letters. I know. <laughs> that's what's really freaky oh, about yeah. that. So uh -huh. that's one of those things up on the third floor. There's a yeah. lot that goes on. Is there a message in it? No, she <laughs> said it was just random letters. And um, she said it was really bizarre. I mean, that's one of the that's, things that went on. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's not just the jail, it's yes. the courthouse, it's whole city. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are, there's quite a bit of voucher. Well, yeah. I'm ready to start investigating. Me as well. What do you think? All right. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Anything else? No, I, yeah. I probably about talked to your girl. No, that was yeah. great. Yeah. We loved yeah. it. We got to know what we're getting Not every night you get the judge on film. I know. It's <laughs> awesome. It's pretty badass. <laughs> Now we got to get the courthouse next time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the courthouse, it's its a cool old building. Yeah. And maybe we can paint paint something for you. Over yeah, there. paint. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, let me get them all back around. So these are the original keys? Well, I don't, I, I don't know that they're original because some of this has been added, but you can't just go buy these keys. Uh, we have, there's a, um, a welder here in town that whenever we get a new one of these keys made, he literally has to sit here at the door, put it in, jiggle it, file it down, put it in, jiggle wow. it, file it down, because there's no way, there's no other way to make keys for, for this door. Wow. And that then, is reason. Takes a while. Yeah. <laughs> takes a while, so. Um, break the key off? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, right after, like, like the judge was saying, right after we met, uh, one of my first interesting stories in here was, we were trying to get the place open to the public for the first time, and me and Connie started this relationship a ways back um, about trying to get paranormal groups in here. And we got the idea, just like you're here, 
uh, donations uh, in exchange to explore the jail. And that has just worked great. Um, and it's all going in a positive direction, which is what, the way it should. But what happened is when we first, uh, there were a lot of trust things in the beginning, you know, like paranormal coming in here. And one of the scariest or creepiest things that happened involved a cop, one of the Ballinger PD. We had a uh, event here, a third party event, which we have quite a few, and they basically run their own events. And we're not picking fault at them, but it was just some people in their group for some reason decided to come over here one time and try to break into the jail. <laughs> right after we were doing the trust stuff, you know, trying to get, get it to that level. And I had a conversation with the judge the next morning about the whole situation. We were unfortunate and told her we're gonna be real careful from now on, monitor everybody, but it wasn't the events group, it was their fault, it was the people that came. They just were doing things they weren't supposed to. Well, this leads into the story that happened the next weekend. After we had resolved all this, I was, Connie was up here for that weekend when they were trespassing and trying to break into the jail, those people um, got all that cleared. So I come up the next weekend with just a group that run at the old park. And I told everybody in the group, I said, if you see anything weird at that jail, tell me, come get me. You know, I was a little leery at that point. I was just, and I told them all to stay away from the jail. That, that way we wouldn't have any issues. Well, uh, we hadn't rented to jail that night. We were just over at the old park. And at 1 a.m., two women come in getting me with this look on their face. And they said they came out on the balcony and they're just taking a break. And they looked over here and they saw what looked like two people walking around the side to jail with two lanterns or bright flashlights. So right away, <laughs> I get all upset again because we had just resolved that other so-called almost trespassing incident. So I was mad. I, I thought somebody had broken in. And I, I asked them real fast. I said, is that group all over here? They said, oh yeah. They said, nobody's gone over there. We just took a break and there's somebody walking around. So anyway, I barge out the door. Um, I used to be a cop in the Air Force, so I went back into this mode from my past. And I started barking commands as I'm walking over, the come, coming across the street, that you better get out of the jail, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was all on the phone already with Ballinger PD. They were on their way, so I was on the phone as I'm yelling these commands. And four of the women are coming with me, so I told them to go around the jail and form a a circle more or less around the jail that way if they got out we'd see who they were and where they went so we had the jail completely encircled nobody was coming out and as we were walking to the window the women saw it too clearly down here on the other side where we were walking earlier we saw a tall what looked like a tall man and a shorter figure but you couldn't see their you couldn't tell what they really look like you just see their shape and to us, they looked like they were holding lanterns. They weren't flashlights, they were lanterns. So we're barking, yelling through the window. Right when we did, the two figures freaked out and we heard them running around in here. We heard them either going down the steps or going up the steps. We could just hear all this clamoring and then all of a sudden the steps stopped. Well, at that point, the point Ballinger PD, he's coming this way. He's coming in really fast on the call and he comes around the corner and pulls up and he goes, he goes, what's going on? I explained real quick. I said, they're in the jail right now. And he's like, well, how'd they get in? And I said, I don't know. So we walked around and this window over here was unbolted. Hmm. And we actually lifted the window up. And I said, this must be the window. So there's no other open entrance. So anyway, he crawls through the window with his flashlight. And I stand by the window holding it. And he's running all throughout the jail, checking everything with his flashlight everything and then he comes down like 10 minutes later with the biggest eyes I've ever seen and he goes are you sure there's somebody in here and I went yeah I said we all saw him and the women were confirming they're like we all saw him <laughs> they didn't get out of this building he goes they're either good hiding artists <laughs> or there's nobody in there 
<laughs> and he started getting all spooked. <laughs> yeah. And so here we are standing outside the building. He kept asking us over and over. He's like, are you sure? It's like, yes, we have multiple witnesses. They were in the building. They didn't get out of the building. So that's a mystery. That was one of the first mysteries that started everything. Uh, another interesting story that I had was when we first opened the jail, the women's cell upstairs, and the judge forgot to mention this, the jail had been closed since the 90s. Well, we were trying to get all the cells open and the judge mentioned that day, it was gonna be our first day, our first event, our first public hunt in the jail. She said, we can't get the women's cell door open. Nobody's ever been able to open that cell door. It had been closed for, since the 90s. They couldn't get in here. I talked her into letting me have one of the keys. And I said, do you mind if I stand by this door all day? And I said, I will not break the key. I'll be real careful. Well, I, they trusted me that day. And I stood up here all by myself, hearing noises, hearing all sorts of things, trying to get this lock to open. And finally, the key goes click. And I pull open the cell door and I stood in the door and I was looking into the women's cell and I was like, why does this look so strange to me? It, it looks too clean. For someone that's been closed since the 90s, it was just clean. Well, anyway, I stepped into the cell and right as I did that, it goes poof, 30 years of dust. <laughs> <laughs> it was flying everywhere. Dust was coating everything. That's why it looks so clean. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like this. I'm just like, I can't see. <laughs> Which is funny, you know. But at the same time, I was thinking, wow, I'm the first person that stepped in a cell in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Which was Crazy. pretty cool. And uh, we started doing uh, research, we started doing paranormal investigations. We've had a lot of groups in here. Um, you all were in here for the first time. Um, this place is weird. Um, the judge hasn't really been in here like a lot of us, but there's just been a lot of weird things. Um, this figure scene, uh, just like the figure on the second floor, when we saw him, multiple witnesses, and then he disappeared. We never saw him get out of the building. Uh, we hear footsteps in here, walking. You'll be in the cell all by yourself. We actually heard a few screams too. Couldn't figure out where they were coming from. We couldn't figure out if they were coming from outside or if they were coming in, but they sounded like they were coming from inside. There's no wind tonight out there, which is real good, because when it's windy, it kind of banks on some of this stuff, which you'll think it's paranormal. There's no wind. It's actually very still in here right mm. now. So you can clearly hear everything. And when it's cold, you can actually hear things even better. Um, you'll hear them walking up the stairs. You'll hear them going down the stairs. Oh, we hear cell doors slamming in here. The doors, wow. they slam. And you see how heavy these things are. Mm -hmm. And we can never find out where the source of the slam is. <laughs> That's another thing. So you'll be up here doing your thing and all of a sudden, bam, in the building, you're just like shaking, you're like looking around and you can't find out where it came from. Oh, I want to hear that so bad. It, I don't know if I did. <laughs> it, I'm not gonna lie to you. When you're in here by yourself, oh, another thing that happens, um, I have to come over here and close the jail at 1 a.m. just like I'm gonna do again tonight. I always walk over here with a fully charged flashlight. I'm in here by myself. Usually in the summer, we have to open the windows. So when I come over here, I call her to come over here. I have to shut the windows all by myself going through the jail. It never fails. My flashlight always goes dead oh. <laughs> when I'm walking around. Jeez. One time I came over without my phone, my flashlight goes dead and I'm walking in the jail going, great, now I gotta walk through here in the dark, <laughs> shutting all these windows and I didn't really, I was hearing things, but the creepiest thing, just like at the old park, you just feel like you're being followed all the time in here, especially when you're in the dark and you don't have a flashlight. And so what about the hangings were you saying? Oh, the hangings. We started doing research and we found out that one man around 1958 committed in there, hung himself. We don't know what cell. Um, we also found out that there was another one in the 40s. 
Um, there was also something about a lynching where they might have actually hung a man in here, attacked him. Really? Uh, there also are some murders. There are some stabbings. There are different things that have surfaced. Uh, the creepiest thing is that cell at the top, the third floor, the one without the window. Mm -hmm. That one, we feel, we haven't totally uncovered this yet, but we feel like the inmates might have murdered somebody, threw his body down and set him on fire, or set the cell on fire. Really? To cover up the murder. Why do you think that? Because the evidence that you get, the things that come through on uh, Spirit ITC, uh, boxes, EVPs, they all lead in that direction. Interesting. It's so kind of a mystery. Yeah, and there are just numerous things about them lighting fires, so it makes sense when you think about it. And everybody knows jails, especially the overcrowding in here, they're on top of each other. So if you made somebody mad in here and you're overcrowded like that, yeah, they're going to get you. Especially in the Texas heat. Yes. Like 30 people in that tiny space. Yeah. It's just, I can't imagine how terrible that would be. We also get uh, snitch coming through a lot in here. Wow. So it's going to make you wonder if somebody snitched and then they got, got them back. So we got a couple stabbings, murders, Possessions, lynching. that's the other thing. Possessions. We brought people in here, normal people. Some of them are paranormal investigators. Other people are just people that come on our overnight paranormal lockdowns. Sometimes we include the jail, sometimes we don't. But we've taken people up here that have never been in here, don't know anything about it, men and women, and they've got them possessed. And when I say possessed, it's not like exorcist. It's like somebody has taken them over another person. Had a woman not too long ago sitting up in that same mysterious cell, the same one where they might have chained him to the walls, you know, back in the day. Uh, same one where we think somebody was lit on fire. She sat down in a chair, and when that night we were actually trying to communicate with Bonnie. And while we were doing this whole thing, while was, she was sitting there, she was asking questions, she was normal, everything was fine. And then something started to change. And while we were standing there, her face changed in front of us. And it was the weirdest thing. I mean, it didn't even look like the same woman to us. And then right when that was happening, her mannerism started to change. Then her voice started to change. And she went totally out. She totally zoned out. We had to get her out of the building. Because she collapsed at one point, we had to get her out of the building, we had to take her over to the pavilion. It took her 25 minutes to come out of it. Damn. So you think it's possible? So, a lot of these things we don't talk about. I'm talking about it now. But a lot of these things, these are public events. We don't want to scare people off. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, you don't want to necessarily put everything out there but there's been some creepy things. Somebody got pushed down these stairs one time too. Damn. Um, so you're saying right now that there's even creepier shit that's happened that you don't want to fully talk about on camera. I would venture to say as haunted as the old park is across the street, this jail is quickly stepping up wow. to that same level. You think it's possible that one of us could get possessed tonight? Possible and we also think that there's a link between the hotel and here because every time we've done dual investigations It's almost like something follows people from the jail to the old park oh, God. Great <laughs> Well, I'm ready to get possessed Let's Not go. me <laughs> <laughs> All right, man I I just, Two words Be careful oh. Mm. Noted. Yeah, <laughs> we'll try our best. <laughs> so after the tour, we decided we wanted to go to the third floor to ask some questions. But we did not know at all how fast this night would ramp up. I mean, we were both terrified that one of us was going to get possessed that night. Just check this out. <laughs> Dude! No way. Okay, yo, roll, dude. Look at it, guys. Look at it. 
We are walking up right now with our shit. The f***ing door to the jail is open. Are you f***ing rolling? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, fuck, I'm actually kind of sussed out by that. Hello? Okay, so this is usually when we would do our intro, but, okay, I do not know if we filmed us leaving the jail, so people, I don't know if they know how creepy this is, but we, they shut this door, and they literally said, I hope this door isn't open when you guys come back, because Dan was saying that the spirits open the door and also people break in here, you know what I mean? Hello? If there's somebody in here, we're gonna call the police. That's very scary, first of all. Look at how thick this door is. This is not just gonna move in the wind. This is like a heavy door. So, yeah. Um, I don't know why somebody would be in here right now. It's just very creepy, but we're gonna pause the cameras for a second, do a sweep of the building, make sure nobody's here. I think I might call Dan and see if he could come over and walk through with us quick, but. Yeah, we're gonna get set up and... Oh, did you hear that? I don't know. This is usually where we do our intro to the video, but this is scary already. Somebody could be in here with us. And I do not like that at all. Okay, let's pause that. So, oh my God, as you can see in that footage, I still, I don't know if we, we got this on camera earlier with Dan saying that, oh, let's hope that the door isn't open when you come back to the jail because then it's going to be freaky. The damn door was open. Um, and that is a very, very heavy metal door. So we like to debunk stuff. There's literally no possible way that that could have been, could have been the wind or anything like that. It was a hundred percent something either a person that went in there and then came out or you know a ghost or even something darker we don't really know but we checked the whole building we made sure no one was in there and yeah it was time to investigate okay so we ended up doing our proper intro again we walked through the whole building there's nobody in here but we've left the door open just so you can see it one more time from kind of how we found it that was scary but yeah there's there's literally nowhere that anybody can hide in this building and we know that there's nobody in here it's just connor and i but yeah uh definitely a creepy ass way to start the night i swear i don't know if we actually got them on camera saying that earlier uh about oh i hope you don't find the door open later and of course it was open and yeah it's not locked so that's creepy in and of itself especially when you see how heavy that door is i mean it's it's not the wind it's a, th a million percent could never even possibly be the win, but how are you doing tonight, brother? This is going to be a very spooky night. Um, it's freezing cold. So, I mean, we're kind of heightened senses right now. Uh, I don't like jails. 
don't like prison. Well, I mean, good. a lot of people don't, but uh, especially when they're haunted, doesn't really make it feel any better. So I'm excited to see what we get tonight here, but at the same time, I'm pretty scared. Without further ado, man. <sighs> Something about this place just gives me the heebie-jeebies. <gasps> And it's starting to rain too. I don't know if you can see the droplets of water in the air, but okay. <coughs> Enter the upstairs at your own risk. Now, on camera, let's shut the door and put the brick in place. Just to show people. Now, if this opens again, I'm f running out the door. Unless there's someone blocking it. How would they do that? Someone standing in front of the doorway? Yeah, but we can pull it open. I know, I'm saying door's oh, open and there's someone there's standing that. there. Then I'm shutting the door again. <laughs> We're staying gonna, in prison. Yeah, I'm just going to lock myself in here. Okay, guys, so right now we're upstairs in the jail. Um, this cell behind us is where the evil whatever force that they thought in this whole jail resides. Um, Dan was saying they think that there might have been a murder in there where inmates basically killed one of their own and burned their body. Um, that's what the evidence has led people to believe. But we're up here trying to figure out who's in the jail with us, where they're at. We've got some new devices tonight. We've got a Paralyte down there, a more sensitive one that we just bought. We've got... Oh, did you see that motion light just go off over there? That static got that. We're not, <laughs> that's f***ing trippy. Um, we have a new REM pod that's in the creepy room that detects static as well as EMF energy. And we've got this new Ovilus device that we're gonna use alongside Spirit Talker to try and mix stuff up. To anybody here in the jail with us, I just wanna introduce ourselves. We're here just to talk to you and we wanna hear your stories. My name's Colin. My name's Connor. We just want to figure out where you are. James. James. It's like, that's not your name. Your name's James. James, James dude. Jewelry. James Spring Jewelry Bind. Connor's real name is James, so that's Her a little freaky. Jewelry bindings true like handcuffs mm. okay so it seems like you're here with us it's really quiet in here can you make she pushed someone got pushed downstairs remember they said that during the interview is there anyone here with us right now Where? That's so strange how that keeps going off. It's a motion light. If you're here in this building, we're just here to talk to you tonight. If you see any of our red lights, walk up to them and they'll show us that you're here. We have one in that doorway. We have one right here. You can also use your voice to speak with us. We just want to try to figure out who's here in the jail. Is it a man? Is Bonnie here with us? Dudes, look at me. I'm standing here, I just took my jacket off. Can you see my tattoos? All right, I, I'm, let's do a little experiment. 
So if you can see my tattoos, look at them right now on my arms. Why don't you try to say what one of my tattoos is? I have a flower, a grim reaper, 13, a skeleton. I have a bunch of tattoos. Can you see them? Unfinished business. Intention. Yes, I'm here. Okay, who's who's here? Sitting down on so. Sure. Counter. I literally just set it on the counter. It's trippy. Lose. Lose. So Connor and I are sitting here in our own cells and we just want to talk to whoever's here. Dan! Is that Dan? Dan. Yes. Describe, indicate, Dan. We've taken people up here that have never been in here, don't know anything about it, men and women, and they've got them possessed. Now when I say possessed, it's not like exorcist. It's like somebody has taken them over. Not a person. I just said speak. Daddy. Daddy. Hello. <laughs> Seven. Seven. If there's anybody in here, can you come on to this cell block? We'd really like to talk to you. Whoa. That's right above me. Whoa, which one is that? That's right above me. Oh, shit. Yo, that's crazy. Look at none of these other ones are going off. Yo, I like the lights. I like the lights. Oh, oh that's good to hear, my friend. And you just come sit on the bunk above me? Oh, that's trippy, dude. Yeah, we... It would also be awesome if you could tell us your name. Can you tell us what your name is? You will see me. Well, I'd love to see you. Where are you? Why don't you show yourself to us? That's what their name was too. Do we have an Edward with us right now? Protection. Ritual. Ritual. You must leave. Ugh. Why do we need to leave? Is there somebody that's gonna hurt us here? chilling in the cell. Just two dudes chilling in jail. Living the dream. 
Please move back. Tell. Please move back. He's like, you go back in there. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Did you, did you like having this guy alone in your cell? Do you want to do something to him? Facing the other direction, bro. It's facing around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's painting's eyes. Painting's eyes. Yo, what the f dude? Is that you standing right there? Oh, that motion light just went off too. Closing? Yes. Face. Oh my god, what? Oh, oh, I just heard like a fing footstep right here. Hey, if you're if there's somebody in here, we're gonna call the police on you. Look at this stuff. Okay, so <laughs> to describe that sequence of events just now. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Sorry, that scared the hell out of me. We were sitting here. We were talking about how cold it got. The it Explain, the lights. Explain the lights. Okay, that light that's going off right there is because you're standing in front of it. If you step away from it, it'll stop going off. Also, if you see any of the red lights, you can go poke them or touch them, and it'll it'll make noise. Can you do that? Can you go touch one of the red lights? Can you do that again? Now that you know how to do that, maybe we can have you answer some questions for us by touching those lights. 
I'm gonna turn this one off though because it's really loud. Oh, oh, wait, is that me? No, this one. What the f Oh, and this one, this one too. Look at that. You can barely even see it going off. Dude, listen. Look at this thing. The static is going crazy. You're being followed. What? On the spirit. That's what it said? Do you see this static going on? There's a static charge in the air. Okay. I mean, how bizarre. The, mo the moment it goes, we turn every device, or turn the music box off and everything stops going off. Silence is what it says. Okay, you wanted silence? If that was you that banged on something in here? I thought you just heard a footstep. If that was you that banged on something in here? If that was you that banged on something in here? I thought you just heard a footstep. If that was you that banged on something in here, or set these devices off, we're gonna give you a moment of silence and you can say or do whatever you want to. Can you make a noise wherever you are? Was that you? It's not just me here. Oh. There was a knock oh. in here right before us. And you said, was that you? It's not just me here. Dude. Is the possessor here? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Look at my goosebumps. <laughs>
like, what the f***? <laughs> this is f***ing scary. It sounds... It sounds like someone tapping a pencil on a desk. Yeah, it does. We're using the camera right now, pal. So, to explain to people just now, from the moment that the music box went off and we heard that bang, it's been like, we heard footstep or like shuffling downstairs. The f***ing REM pods have been going off like crazy and different REM pods too, every time. And like the, Dude, this is like spot on. I got a question. Why do you like to possess people? I can't tell where the tapping is coming from. Because every time we get closer to it, it stops. Can you tell me why you like to possess people? What's that tapping noise? I'm just driving me fucking crazy. I had an injury. I had an injury. Maybe it likes to possess healthy people. Then we're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Every time it says something, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> who fuck knows? Harry? Is that your name? So it's Harry that's here. Straight up, this thing has said, go left, go deeper, go further. Where is it trying to... How do we determine where it wants us to go? Like, honestly, like what, what would be a method to use? What's deeper? Oh, maybe in the maximum security area. <laughs> That's creepy. We haven't been in there yet. <clears throat> so, there were so many noises in the jail. It is just... I mean, this footage has to be shocking for you guys to watch because normally it takes us at least an hour to start hearing any sort of poltergeist activity to have the spirits and energies warm up to you and feel like they're comfortable speaking with you. This place was immediately, they wanted to make their presence known and they were doing violent things. They were, it sounded like slamming a door, walking around, all of our devices going off, um, saying incredibly relevant and spooky words. I mean, I was just, we were, we were honestly flabbergasted, if you want to choose that word. And, Go with it that's that's like we had no no words to even describe what was happening and we had no idea that what we were about to capture would just keep getting darker and more violent this place was very very scary i mean the way that it ramped up so fast i mean it was zero to a hundred and it also felt as if whatever was there communicating with us was backing us into the corner so we couldn't escape, so we decided to do a DR-60. We wanted to find out what this thing wanted from us. So, unfortunately, we don't have the most time tonight. We're actually renting this place from the county. So we've got a really, really rigid time limit here for how long we can spend in the jail. But right now we're gonna do a DR-60 based upon the evidence that we've been getting. Whatever's over there wanted us to keep going further and further. 
we've heard It's like 42 degrees and I'm a psychopath and I'm wearing a t-shirt. But like when stuff like is about to happen, I keep getting this f***ing like wave of like Ooh. chills and cold that keeps hitting me. Can you make another loud noise or shut another door for us? Sixty. One place it right. Oh. I know. I heard that. My ears are ringing really bad. Oh, I just got. Dude, that's crazy. It's just like the pressure just changed. I feel like a stabbing pain. That's what I was saying. My ears just started. Oh, like, that's really weird, ringing. actually. And my ears never ring like that. Dude, that's trippy because, ah, I'm like getting a stabbing. Did something happen to your head? Is that why you're showing us? Actually, let's just run this DR60 and ask. That's crazy, actually. Did something happen to your head? Is that why you're making me feel a stabbing pain in my skull? I feel like there's somebody messing with us right now. Can you tell me what your name is? We heard that one of you spirits has possessed people multiple times. You like to take control over people's bodies. Do you want to possess us? Did you die in this prison? Once again, why are you making my head hurt?
Dude, I'm like, that's f***ing insane. I have like, it literally feels like a sharp pain, like right here. I don't know if anybody online knows what either physically that means or spiritually. It's also, I have a sinus pain right here and right here. So it's like the pressure just shit. And it was right after you said your ears are popping. So that's strange. Someone's stabbing me in the head. It's crazy, actually. I feel like my eyeball's gonna pop out. Is it rolling? Okay. Somebody's trying to attack me right now. Who are you? Do you not like that we're in the cells? What, what were you in jail for? What crime did you commit? Were you around when the old jail was here? Who's the person or what is the thing that keeps walking around outside? Can you tell me what your name is? Yo, I'm like tripping out. This, I don't know if it's this, these colors or like my head. I feel like so dizzy, bro. It's crazy, actually. I think we might need to take a break. Yeah, let's listen to this tear God damn. Oh. Did that make you feel dizzy or just me? It's very disorienting.
ghost wanted to trap us in here. It's a perfect We just have buddy. to shut that door right there. It somehow got us into a place where it could lock us in. Fuck me, dude. Think about that. It, it guided us here with what it was We should probably saying. get out of here then. That right there sounded like rattling and then like whoop whoop. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's very clear. that has gotten the scariest, the quickest. Like, this place does not f around. <laughs> Jail is pretty serious. But I mean, like, it's f scary in here, bro. Well, I mean, you also have to think about it, like, they said they pretty much recently just started letting people investigate this place. I mean, it was just shut down for a long, long time. Yeah. Let's go finish off with the mess this. All right. So finally, we got to the point of the night where we wanted to do the Estes method. Now, we didn't know exactly who or what we were talking to, but it didn't seem good. It seemed like this thing was affecting us. For me personally, looking back at it, I was coughing uncontrollably. I had this stabbing pain in my forehead. It felt like someone was stabbing me with a knife. Connor had his ears pop at the same time. I mean, it was just, Something in there was physically affecting us, which looking back at it is crazy. I don't even think we connected that in our minds at the time, but this is the possession jail where things like to take control of people's bodies. So for us to be exhibiting these bizarre physical symptoms while we were in there, um, it's pretty frightening to look back on and consider. But as always, we like to do the Estes method because that's in our opinion, one of the clearest ways we can communicate with whatever's in these locations and I went under and I was feeling absolutely just the craziest, craziest stuff in my body and what Connor experienced outside of the headphones, in my opinion, was even scarier. Just check this out. Hey everybody, it's Colin here. Thank you for watching today's video. Hello to all the new subscribers and hello to the rest of our beautiful, wonderful, spooky family. As you know, every single week here on the channel, we give away a free gift bag to one lucky viewer of the show. And this week, to enter the contest, all you have to do is like today's video, let's smash that like button, and comment BAIL ME OUT in the comment section below. I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds to do this now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, one. 
So go comment. You can comment multiple times. It helps the video so much. But anyways, let's get back to today's video. Thank you for listening to my little spiel. I love you guys so much and stay spooky. Okay guys, so for the Estes method, we are sitting back close to where we started in the padded cell room or what they think was the padded cell room where the mentally ill and or dangerous criminals would have been housed. Um, like Dan was explaining earlier, they think there may have been a murder in here where inmates committed some sort of a mob crime and murdered and burned someone in here. Um, so yeah, this has been a spooky night. It feels like something's trying to get at us. I can't stop coughing, I still have a migraine. And yeah, we're gonna use these Gansfield experiment goggles. When we do the Estes, the next time we're gonna use these for an extended session, but these basically just shoot out a red light and I'm gonna have my eyes open and be staring into it, but you can't see outside of the red light. So, let's flick these bad boys on. That looks trippy. <laughs> I think I got them on upside down. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready whenever. All right. My name is Timothy. Connor. My name is Connor. Can you tell me what your name is? This is the same person we were talking to before. No. Hello. Who is this? You will die. One day I will. Soon. No. Okay. Hello. Can you tell me what your name is? Put it in, put it behind you. Put what behind me? Listen to me, now. Are you trying to get me to hide something for you? May I please come in? Come on in. Oh, like a child. Fooled you! I like. Well, thank you for coming in here. What the f Do you know what Not happened? Not the room. Do you know what happened in this room? Oh, I'm getting the same stabbing pain in my head. Purification. What was purified? Ezekiel. Listen to me. I'm listening. What do you have to say? I want to know what happened in this you room. You don't want to mess with him. I want to know what happened in this room. Can you tell me? Cut up. Someone was cut up in this room? Oh, I just heard a f***ing scream, like a... Ah! Oh, these goggles are f***ing trippy too, man. So someone was murdered in here. The skull is beneath. Beneath what? The jail? Oh, bro, I am not even kidding. Hello, James. <laughs> oh, God, that was creepy. That was so clear. So you know who I am. Oh, I'm getting colder again, bro. I don't know if you're feeling that up there, but I am getting that same cold. It's on me. Oh, f 
off, dude. So you know who I'm I am. reaching out. Who are you? I was I was brought here. Dude, it is so cold, bro. All of a sudden to the last minute. I'm watching you. Speak up, boy. I stuck him. Where are you? Inside you. Well, no, you're not allowed to go inside us. Yeah, we're protecting ourselves. No. You can't do that. I want to know what It won't help you. Yes, it will. May I touch you? No. Answer me. Mm, I don't really want you to touch me. We're going to get going here in a few minutes. If you want to say anything to us, you need to tell us now. I lick the blood. What else do you have to tell us? Whoa. He will be destroyed. Whoa. He will be destroyed. Whoa. Shit, like yeah. sorry we couldn't do a longer Estes method I mean we need to get out of here within the next 20 minutes anyways we have to pack our stuff up but I... what was it hello Actually, when did you heard that? Like really, like right when you tapped me. Mm -hmm. Think about how I just had told you that it got so cold, and that's exactly what happened before. Is I mentioned and we we both realized how cold it was, and then the massive thing happened. That's so trippy. I can't wait for you to hear this because it's really loud. That's f***ing creepy. Hello? Well, okay guys, we're gonna do a wrap-up thought later, but we gotta pack up and get out of here. 
That was f***ing spooky. Let's keep a camera out and film while we walk downstairs, though. This jail is very spooky. 100% this place is haunted. Uh, the only thing that I'm really sad about is that we didn't get to spend a little bit more time in there to figure out what was there, who we were talking to, and see what else we might have gotten from that night if we were able to stay a little longer. It almost is confusing in there. I mean, the noises we were hearing, uh, the shuffling, doors slamming, um, it's a very creepy place. Uh, I would really like to go back and do a little bit more uh, digging on to why this place might be haunted. I'm mean, We're sure that it's because of the murders and the gallows being right next door. Yeah, this place is really, really creepy. The Old County Jail in Ballinger is an absolute gem of a location. Not only is it somewhat small and compact, that you're, it makes it easy for you to be able to investigate all the parts in, in the jail. But as you can see in this footage, we had so much activity going on on the third floor, we didn't even have time to go down to the second or the first floors. And that's it's a pretty small building. I mean, all the activity was incredible. It said, I'm gonna knock, then we heard knocking, all the footsteps, the banging, the voices, the Estes saying, it might not even be something human, something darker. The possession aspect, the bodily symptoms that we were exhibiting. There was just so much that happened that night. And it was in a period of only about two hours, really. Um, like I said in the video, you have to rent the building from the county and they have a really hard cutoff time at one in the morning. So um, we just got, unfortunately, a bit of a late start and we didn't get to stay in there as long as we wanted to. but. If you guys would like to see us make a return, be sure to let us know in the comments section because, yeah, this place honestly scared me more than I thought it would. And uh, I'd like to go back because I think that whatever's in there definitely has something more to say. And, I mean, just looking back at what we captured in such a short amount of time, I can't even fathom what you would get being there for hours and hours on end. But, as always, guys, thank you for watching. We have an incredible video coming up next week. These two that we just filmed were just insane. Um, but it's Colin here. We love y'all so much. Thanks for watching and stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>